What's up everybody? So um, I'm making this video because I have decided actually a while ago to break the standards of what's being used in the industry. Um, and the reason for this is one, like in my last video, you guys know I moved to Arizona and we're having a fresh start and everything. And um, I can't really afford all the standard or industry standard software to do my freelance work. So that's a big reason why I am breaking away from the standards. And two, um, I want to make videos that all of you guys can follow along with. Um, now, not all of mine are going to be that way because I'm still going to be using certain software and I will go over that in the video. But for the most part, I want to make this channel accessible to as many people as possible. So that's another reason why I am adjusting what software I'm using. Um, but yeah, let's get to the rest of the video and I want to go over what the standards are that have been used and what are my alternatives that I'm going to be replacing certain software with. So some of your standard industry softwares uh, for specifically, this is leaning more towards games um, for real time work, uh, things like that. Um, game engines have been implemented now into uh, ArcViz and some other fields like Previs for uh, film. Uh, but this is more on the game side because that's what I focus on um, or 3d printing like sculpting and stuff like that So the first one is go to start off with is of course the ZBrush ZBrush is the king for digital sculpting um, It's got a bunch of other tools in there too. Like the, the program is huge uh, There's there's I think there's a tutorial by Noman that's like 760 hours long or something like that. It's ridiculous and I don't even use anywhere near all of that um, I probably use like five, two to five percent of the program for every, for like 80 to 90 percent of my needs. Um, but it is the king for sculpting. Um, as far as traditional modeling goes, um, after ZBrush, there is Autodesk Maya. That is pretty much standard um, all around in film, um, games, ArcViz, uh, things. Actually, ArcViz is more AutoCAD and 3ds Max, but um, when I learned in school, uh, 3ds Max was was pretty much top dog, and now it has changed to where Maya, because their animation system is very good, um, that basically takes the cake for why that's industry standard. Um, because the animation pipeline is pretty much what studios will form their pipeline around, uh, because it's kind of like the middleman between the programming side and the art side, and then that comes together. So it's it's just it is what it is. Um, and then you have the Substance Suite, which has uh, tools like Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and those guys have changed the game on how texturing is done. And um, so those those would be the, if, you, if you're looking to get into really good texture creation or material creation, um, those would be the software uh, that you would be learning to get into a studio. Uh, and outside of that, we have the Adobe Suite, which is stuff like Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Premiere, um, all of that stuff and uh, that that's just been standard for as long as I can remember I mean they've been around since the 90s and um, they've just they're, they're just it that's that's the, that's the standard when it comes to that stuff um, but outside of that you have game engines uh, for the game side like Unreal and Unity um, which they are free but they do come at a cost later if you are successful with your games that you make in them um, so I'll go over that later. Um, and then we also have Marmoset Toolbag, which is a showcase engine. So um, if you guys don't really want to get into game engine work and you're just like creating art um, to show off in real time, then Marmoset Toolbag's your, your, your friend because it's extremely easy and, um, and you get good results with just like a few button clicks. So, but those are the standards. Um, and that's what you'll see mostly for studios, what they're looking at for you guys to get into there. Um, now, some studios don't need you to stick to those standards as long as your work comes out um, well and they can use it, then they'll be okay if you use alternatives to what what that li uh, the list I just gave you. But um, yeah, I mean, th th that's 
those are pretty much like the kings uh, of of you know game development as far as software goes. And there's probably some that I'm missing that I haven't mentioned. So if you guys real if I haven't mentioned anything, please put it in the comments below, and then I can probably talk about it in another uh, video. But my alternatives that I'm changing that I'm trying to replace you know the standard uh, software from. Um, would be the first one would be Blender. Now Blender is uh, kind of controversial, I guess you can say. A lot of people have made fun of it in the past, but uh, it's come a long way since I first heard about it when I was in school. And it's actually really powerful and very, very useful if you have no money to do anything creative because outside of just regular modeling, which it would replace Maya, you can digitally sculpt in it like ZBrush. Um, it's nowhere near as robust like ZBrush, but um, it's capable. Uh, it could replace Adobe After Effects. Uh, there's a compositor in there. There's a video editor in there. So it's kind of like your one-stop shop for a lot of things. There used to even be a game engine in there, but they took that out um, in this newest version, 2.8. And with that one, 2.8 is the newest one that's being built right now. And you can actually download it on their website. I'll put a link in the description below. But um, you can test out the beta and in July should be their official release for 2.8. So right now they're, they're in uh, API freeze, feature freeze, and they're just working on bugs to, to finalize it. And what I love about Blender is it's a lot more stable than Maya. Um, I don't know what Autodesk is doing. I don't know if they just care about those bugs. But the one thing I can tell you is even though Blender might not have as many features or like the industry standard stuff that you're looking for in Maya, it is a really stable program and it's only in beta. Even alpha, when 2.8 was in alpha, it was still more stable than, um, than Maya. But uh, the other thing I want to note about is after 2.8 is fully released, they were going to be focusing on the rest of the year on their animation tools and their sculpting tools. And this is going to be a huge thing because they want really want to make 2.8 ready for studios that are doing animation as well as um, some of their art tools like sculpting to help those who can't afford ZBrush or who can't afford Maya to really have a solid um, alternative to either one of those programs and I really like it because not only is developers working on this the community is, is pushing hard to help these tools get better and that's one thing about open source that's great is the everybody gets to work in it not just the developers so um, I don't remember his name but I'll post his 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 info in the link below in links below and um, he's the one, uh, I think his name's Pablo, uh, uh, and he's working on the sculpting branch for Blender. And basically he's making it really close to my workflow in ZBrush. So if everything works out and the master branch releases with all those tools, I might be leaving ZBrush behind and switching fully to Blender. So we'll see how that comes in the future, but that's probably not gonna be until for another like four or five months till that comes out. So until then, I'm gonna be using ZBrush. And I'll talk about that more. Um, my replacements for Substance Painter and Designer is going to be Armor Paint. Armor Paint is from this guy who basically took the Hacks coding engine, or coding language, I should say, and is building engine inside of Blender, replacing the old one um, that they had in 2.79. That one's called Armory 3D. It's still an alpha, but he's also making a PBR uh, material and texture painting software. Uh, that is called armor paint to go along with it and basically the way i look at it is it's it's substance painter and substance designer mixed together into one program because you can create your materials with nodes like designer but you can also paint those materials onto your uh, models just like substance painter now there's a lot of features lacking because it's still an alpha stage but from since i've been using it it's a really good alternative and probably the only alternative out there that you can get even close to what Substance Painter and Designer can do. It's super cheap. I think it's only like 18 bucks US, um, 16 euros. Uh, but you can also download the code on GitHub to uh, compile it yourself and basically have the program for free. But still, it's super budget friendly and I'd rather pay for it to get it already prepackaged and support, support the developer than just getting it for free. Um, so that would be my Substance Painter, Substance Designer alternative. The next one is Inkscape, GIMP, Darktable, Krita, and Olive. Those are all my replacements right now. Oh, I forgot Audacity too. Those are all my replacements right now 
for um, the Adobe Suite. And basically Inkscape is my Illustrator alternative, GIMP is my Photoshop alternative, Darktable is my Lightroom alternative, Krita, um, that would kind of go as my secondary Photoshop alternative. And then Olive is basically my uh, Premiere alternative. Um, and a lot of them are in different stages of their development right now, but uh, most of them are really close to being uh, able to rival their Adobe counterpart. So. Uh, again, any of these links, they're going to be down in the, in, in the description below. I'm also going to have them on my website where you can just click on the image um, and it'll take you directly to their, um, their website as well. And then as for game engines, I am switching over to the Godot engine. I've been playing with it for a while. I've been doing some tutorials. I haven't gotten to be able to work fully in it, but I am in pre, uh, pre vis stages for a game that, game that I'm going to be developing um, by myself and I'm gonna be using Godot Engine. Um, and my choices for that is one, you don't have to pay them anything. Unreal and Unity, at some point, if you're successful, um, you have to start giving them, uh, like Unreal, it's 5% after your first $3,000. And then Unity, if you make $100,000, you have to start paying per seat, I think like $125 a month. And it's like, as an indie developer, every penny, every dime is important. So that is, that is why I'm not going with them and I'm using something um, open source and really user friendly, even though the documentation is still getting up there. They just released 3.1, well 3.2 now the, with the, some bug fixes and everything. Um, but it has a full PBR pipeline. It also has a 2D um, engine that are separate. So it's not like you're doing this like weird 2D, 3D engine, It's it's there's a 2D workspace and a 3D workspace, and I like that a lot. Uh, for Godot 4, because it's in Godot 3 right now, uh, they are making, uh, it have Vulkan rendering API, which is amazing and awesome, and I think is the future for uh, API development as far as uh, real-time uh, um, real games and stuff like that. But the developers always keeping everybody up to date on Twitter and saying, hey, this is what I'm running into today with Vulkan, da 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 da. And I like that, it's very transparent and um, it's one of the biggest, actually fastest growing projects on GitHub right now. So that's kind of saying something for the Godot engine. Um, and over the past few years that I've heard about it and seen it and looked into it, it, the community has grown vastly. So it's something to look out for. And if you're curious to make um, you know, indie games and you don't want to eventually have to give money if you're successful later on to the other engines, I would definitely take a look into Godot. Um, I like it and I think I'm gonna stick with it. And unless something epic comes out with Unreal, then that's why I would jump over. But really, I, I, I don't need a lot of the stuff that it's emphasized on. Um, so I'm gonna stick with Godot for the meantime and um, try to make some videos on it for you guys. Like I said, some of the software that I'll be using, I'm still gonna be sticking with some industry standard stuff and that's going to be ZBrush and Marmoset Toolbag. And like I said, ZBrush right now is king. I cannot leave my workflow that they have in there, but with the tools that pa Pablo is talking about uh, and he has been developing in Blender, um, I possibly may be switching completely in the future, but we'll see. Because um, ZBrush, I think they're probably one of the better softwares as far as their pay structure goes and how they're doing things. It's king, there's nothing that comes close to it, not even Mudbox. And it's the program that I'm in the most, so. And then the last one is gonna be Marmoset Toolbag, and that's just because it's extremely easy to use until I understand Blender's EV uh, renderer and, and engine and how that works. Um, I'll be sticking with this, but once I do understand uh, the, the real-time engine inside of Blender, um, I will eventually step away from Marmoset. But either way, these are just my alternatives. These are just my opinions. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll go over them and, and direct you or help you in any way that I can. Uh, but yeah, these are the tools that I'm gonna be using from now on. Um, like I said, Blender, Armor Paint, Inkscape, GIMP, Darktable, Krita, Olive, Audacity, uh, Godot. Like I said, I'm still gonna be using ZBrush and Marmoset for the meantime, but I'm trying to move away from the industry standard to give you guys something that's more accessible to you guys who cannot afford uh, some of those programs because they're hundreds if not thousands of dollars. And not everybody can afford that. 
And I want you guys to be able to learn and, and be creative and be successful with your creativity. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's the video. Um, again, as always, anything in the comments, I'd be happy to answer. And if you guys have any videos that you want to see, I, I'm trying to work on some tutorials for you. I'll put them up here on YouTube. If not, they're going to be paid um, on my website or possibly on Udemy, and I'll let you guys know. But um, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support, and I will talk to you later. Thank you.